I'm trying to talk loud and project because I'm short. Hey, uh, yeah, Phil Rossman, I've been with the Sheriff's Office for 21 years. Uh, prior to that, I did seven years in the uh, military. So, uh, yeah, I'm a proud vet. And uh, with the Sheriff's Office, I've done a number of things tactically. Um, most proud of my 15 years with the K-9 unit. So that K-9 unit we did, uh, or I was specialized in, explosive detection, SWAT ops with the dog, and then, of course, patrol apprehension. So that's just a little bit about me, and I'd rather not take up the short amount of time that we have just talking about me. So I'm going to move on. Is everybody ready? I got you guys after lunch, so I'll try and keep you awake. Something I'm passionate about, uh, active shooter and active shooter response. I actually dislike the term or title active shooter. Okay, it doesn't always have to be a shooter to be a threat, right? Look around the world. We're talking about vans, trucks, knives, swords, explosives, and then guns. That's around the world. So we talk about the country. Why are we here? I mean, why, what has happened over the course of, say, the last 40 years to ne necessitate this type of training? Well, what started it all? I'll tell you. April 20th, 1999, two young men, Dylan Klebolt and Eric Harris, 18 and 17 at the time, walked into Columbine High School. They set two propane bombs in the cafeteria of that school. They failed to detonate. They waited, they waited for people to come out of the school hoping that the bombs would detonate. They failed to do so. So they decided to take it upon themselves to walk into the school and shoot and randomly kill 13 people, 12 students, and a teacher, wounding 23 others. That's what happened on April 20th, 1999. So those numbers there, in and of itself, ought to be enough. But why did that bring so much light to this? You think that was the first active shooter incident in the United States? 1990, right here, GMAC, eight people killed. Aggravated day worker had his car repossessed. Somebody walked into GMAC after he got his car repossessed and gunned down eight people and then himself inside GMAC. Anybody live here in 1990 remember that? That's locally. 2017 or 16 now. Yeah, 16. A guy here, we thwarted his effort to conduct a mass shooting at the Islamic Center. You remember that? FBI made it. It's all over the news nationally. So those kind of plots. So let me throw some more at you, and I want you to see if you recognize anything, okay? Of course, the year before Columbine, we had Jonesboro, Arkansas, where a 13-year-old and 11-year-old decided that it's time to start shooting. So they pulled the fire alarm, let the students run out into the parking lot and into the yard, and they gunned down five, injured 11 more. 11 and 13. Okay? So then we go on to Fort Hood, Texas. Two different occasions. Twice they were victimized. Military recruiting station in Chattanooga, Tennessee. More recently, Pulse Nightclub. More recently than that, Mandalay Bay. Jason Aldean concert, 59 dead, 500 wounded. Okay, Charleston, South Carolina, church, historic black church. Dylan Roof decides he's going to grab a gun and walk in and gun down nine people while they're praying. Okay, do we notice anything about any of these? And I can go on. The list goes on and on. Do we notice anything about those? That's the only correlation they all have. It's a place of gathering. Otherwise, the venue... It could be anything, anything. I've talked about concert venues. I talked about churches, I talked about schools. We can go to Virginia Tech, what Cho did. 33 people in the school. First he did the dorm, then he went into the uh, academic building. 33, and then gunned down himself, which is what happens most of the time in those cowardly acts. So it's not always Islamic terror that we need to face, okay? It's whether or not we deal with mental illness, whether or not somebody can't handle stress, whether or not he's ticked off that his car got repoed, okay? This lesson or this PowerPoint is just the tip of the iceberg. Guys, I typically teach a two-day, 16-hour course of this. Practicals. I do practical applications. I bring in Sims guns, role players. You guys wouldn't even know it was coming. So, and we see responses. So, that being said, let's move on. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to just try and highlight what I can to try and make you guys aware of uh, what you may or may not do during an active response. 